Purple soul child got a fist ball. I'm a respawn of ancestors and I'm blessed, huh? They gonna knock him, tell him fess up. I get checks up, hella carefree, not the scares me, hella reckless. Happy New Year everyone, it is 2020, welcome to the very first episode of Season 8 of UPW Primetime Wednesday Night Showdown. We are in New York City and we have a stacked match card here for you tonight. This bout is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being led to the ring by her husband Joey from Brooklyn, New York. She is the current Wednesday Night Showdown Women's World Champion Cameron the Assassin Santos. Don't ask me why they show her name twice. It's not even an advanced intro. It's just a regular intro. And for some reason they show it twice and I can't get rid of it. So it's been bugging me for all these seasons. It's still bugging me now. But regardless, she's a great wrestler. It's a great way to start off the very first episode of Wednesday Night Showdown with the new women's world champion winning that championship from Christina Ricardo at UBW Honor. At least I think it was Christina Ricardo. It was so long ago, I can't freaking remember. And her opponent, hailing from Newark, New Jersey, Carissa Rivera. Carissa Rivera. Yeah, I said it in Spanish. Rivera. Now I'm saying Rivera. Um, Carissa has held championship before here in UPW, but not this championship title. And she is poised to make 2021 season eight her year. And we'll see if that happens. She's definitely got the athleticism, the strength, the power and the experience to become champion. See if she can make a statement here tonight like Dynamite did on Monday after she took out the new women's world champion on primetime Thunder Rosa. Referee calls for the bell. Connor will tie up. Carissa, the stronger of the two, pushing Cameron Santos into the corner. Referee looking for a clean break. And that's what he gets. And Carissa Rivera with a standing hurricane runner. Kick to the back of Cameron. And Cameron, leg scissors take down on Rivera. Jawbreaker counter. Misses with a drop kick to the legs. And Cameron pulls the hair on a mat slam on Carissa Rivera. Hits her in the back. <coughs> Dragon screw. I'm gonna tell you guys something that's funny, uh, and you'll notice it when you watch the shows. But another kick to the back to Cameron Santos. 
And now she pulls the hair in a mat slam on Cameron. So I try and talk as professionally as possible during these shows. But when something goes wrong, I completely turn ghetto as shit. And my Puerto Rican accent comes out because I'm pissed off. And you guys will notice it if you've been watching or are watching. Just pay attention. If something goes wrong, I'm going to be just messed up. Carissa Rivera on the reversal grabs Cameron Santos. And a hammerlock DDT on the chair. Oh, shit. She got a quick. And a running bulldog by the champion on Cameron Santos. On uh, Carissa Rivera. Tassi Rivera into the corner forearm. And a clothesline to the back of Rivera. Carissa with a nice crossbody with a pin, but countered. I mean, uh, Santos, they better kick out of not even a one leapfrog. Tries for a drop kick. Cameron Santos able to avoid. Now throwing against the ropes again. Again, misses with a drop kick. Joey Santos just put a chair inside the ring. I don't think that Cameron or the referee is aware of it. And she misses with another clothesline, but she is able to throw Cameron. And now Joey on the top. And it's, it doesn't seem to be affecting. Carissa's just got her mind right on the match. Joey's interference didn't seem to bother Carissa Rivera at all. Oh, the referee grabs a chair, throws it outside. Oh, a kill shot out of nowhere. Goes for the pin. Referee's in position. And Rivera able to kick out at two on the near fall. And Rivera... Hitting Cameron Santos with that reverse STO and now goes for the pin. Nice camera work. Oh, referee distracted by Joey Santos. And Carissa Rivera not happy about it, but could be looking for that tilt to world slam. Oh my God. And connects on the world champion. And there's the pin. And again, Joey Santos. Getting involved in this match. And an ultimate warrior style. Oh, kick to the head. And a nice crucifix. And Cameron Santos just brushing it away off of her shoulders. Cameron Santos finishing off the take uh, take back uh, comeback with a drop kick. Oh, look at that sniper driver! Oh, and connects on Carissa Pereira. Boy, I messed that up. Goes to the pin. Great camera work. And another kick out by Rivera. And Cameron Santos now. In position for another kill shot. Oh, Carissa Rivera catches the kill shot. Picks up Cameron Santos. And another reverse STO. There's another pin. Damn, the camera work is good today. And Cameron Santos kicks out at two on the near fall. Rivera. I don't know what she was. Inverted DDT on the counter by Cameron Santos on Rivera. And Cameron Santos looking for a submission. Indian Deathlock. Either an Indian Deathlock or a Cloverleaf. I can never remember because I'm horrible at that shit. Uh, Rivera able to kick her away. Did do some damage to the back. And another mat slam pull of the hair at Rivera now looking for her own comeback. 
Rivera going up to the top turnbuckle. Right in front of Joey. Oh, misses with the elbow. And Cameron. Oh, please, come on. What is this, WWE? She never touched her. But there's a kill shot to the air. And Cameron Santo takes the win on the invisible uh, kill shot. WWE style. But if you position the camera just right, it looks like it actually connected. Um, I'm not doing that, but I'm just saying. If they position it just right, you could change it to make it look like it connected. I mean, she wasn't even close. That kick was at least two or three feet away. It's a conspiracy. It's like having Eva Marie in UPW from NXT. Carissa uh, Rivera putting up a good fight against a champion, but Cameron Santos has been multi women's champion for a reason it's because she's just that damn good congratulations to your winner again the Wednesday night showdown of women's world champion Cameron Santos And Wednesday Night Showdown may have changed, but we still have Lucha Libre action, and that's coming up next. This match is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making his way to the ring, standing at six foot tall, weighing in at 203 pounds, from Oida, Japan, Tanaka Suzuki. Tanaka Suzuki, former Lucha Libre champion. Hoping to get there again. Of course, that Lucha Libre Championship is now held by Travis Lazara. And Travis Lazara is, when he gets the championship, he's been champion before, but when he gets the championship, um, and he hasn't just been Lucha Libre champion, Travis Lazara has been champion in other divisions and other shows, and when he gets the championship, he gets a long, long championship run, and that's because he is really, really that good. But this is one of the most impressive people to ever step into a UPW arena. He debuted last season and I don't think he's going anywhere. And his opponent, standing at 6'1", weighing in at 198 pounds, from Monterrey, Nuevo León, Mexico, Humberto Carrillo. Humberto Carrillo, also former Lucha Libre champion. Tell you the truth, I don't even remember who the champion was before UBW Honor. I think it was Humberto. It could have, I don't know who it was, to tell you the truth. I'm completely, uh, you know, it's a new season. Um, some of them I remember, some of them I don't, but also a former champion. I'll look back and whoever it is, of course, will get a rematch. There's the bell, 20 minute time limit, 20 seconds on the outside. And right away into a pin. Innovative move by Tanaka Suzuki. Uh, 
I hope you guys like the arena. Now, the UPW sign on the side of the barricade is white. I was going to put... Oh! I was going to make it uh, yeah, uh, green as well, but I was like, damn, that's too much green. Uh, monkey flip by Humberto Carrillo. And I sent a picture to my brother of the arena. He was like, oh, it's green. It's, it's very... Very natural, and I said, yeah, the show is eco-friendly. <laughs> Tilt World DDT by Humberto Carrillo. Tanaka Suzuki back up top, tried to go, both of them. Tried to go for a dropkick, both missed. Oh, Tanaka Suzuki. Oh! Running. I don't, I running STO, but I mean, he was on his knees, so I mean, I don't know how to call it anything other than a regular STO, but going for the size suplex trifecta or gut wrench suplex, whatever you want to call it's up to you. They're both right. Oh, clothesline over the top rope by Humberto Carillo. Now we saw on Monday non-stop people getting thrown or, or clotheslined over the top turnbuckle i mean over the top turn uh over the top uh ropes and i wonder if that's what we're gonna see all day today we didn't see it in the last match tanaka suzuki with a jawbreaker trying to fight back flying elbow pops back up to his feet And again, going for the triple gut wrench suplexes. Tanaka Suzuki using all 203 pounds, all of it, muscle, most of it. And use it in, oh, look at the reverse. Oh, side effect. And Tanaka Suzuki misses with the kick to the back. Inverted Frankensteiner by Humberto Carrillo. And Carrillo with the pin. Only a one count on Suzuki. Now trying to get a submission from Suzuki. I don't think that's going to work. Not here. Forearm to the face, thrown into the corner by Humberto Carrillo. Carrillo with the kick to the face, not going for that. Cartwheel moonsault. I mean, the moonsault itself is cool, but I don't know why the cartwheel has to be there. But, you know, that's just me. Nice sweep of the leg on the counter by Tanaka Suzuki. And Suzuki! Almost takes him out. Almost takes out Humberto Carrillo with sleeping with the fishes. Not going up for that five star frog splash. No. Not going for the five star frog splash. Oh, Humberto Carrillo catches him into a sit out power bomb. Into a pin, but too close to the ropes. Had to break the pin. Now Humberto Carrillo with a sit-out powerbomb again. This time does not go for the pinning combination. That could be a mistake. Tanaka Suzuki back up top. Is he going for the five-star frog splash this time? And he does. Connects on. Humberto Carrillo goes for the pin. And Tanaka Suzuki takes the win on Humberto Carrillo. And Tanaka Suzuki starting off season eight the right way. Every season, everything starts off brand new. Everything changes. Um, the rivalries are over to begin new rivalries. Uh, everything resets. So 
We don't know who's the number one contender. The only thing we do know is the number one contender for one championship, and that is for the super heavyweight championship. Uh, we know who that is, and that's Wesley Wolf. And Wesley Wolf will be facing his potential, potential opponent for that championship in this main event. In Swan Aura, if Jericho White does not win in his rematch. Congratulations, Tanaka Suzuki. Oh, now we know that Tanaka Suzuki is the number one contender for the Lucha Luta Championship. And damn, he knocked Humberto Carrillo all the way down to number five. So I guess we know who the number one contender is now. All right, let's keep this show rolling. Second show of season eight. Time for some tag team action. This tag team contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making their way down to the ring at a combined weight of 745 pounds, Nero and Praetorian, the Gladiators. Gladiators are former tag team champions. Can they recapture championship gold this season? They were only champions one time. It was a short championship reign. But to take the championships away from the four horsemen is a feat in and of itself. I mean, Private Party did it. Uh, the Gladiators did it. Um, so, and so did uh, the former champions. Uh, I tell you their name right now, but I can't remember. Oh, Weapons of Mass Destruction. <laughs> And their opponents at a combined weight of 708 pounds they are the new UPW Wednesday night showdown tag team champions Big Bad Lenny the Barbarian Mosca the four horsemen Big Bad Lenny on your left Mosca on the right lost the championships awaited almost Six weeks until UPW Honor to win these championships back from Weapons of Mass Destruction. Weapons of Mass Destruction, of course, will get a rematch. Because we do have rematches here. And if you win your rematch, then that tag team gets, a, or that champion gets a rematch. It's not going to keep going back and forth. You get one rematch. If you don't win your rematch, you're back at the bottom. You got to climb your way back up to the top and. If the AI doesn't change you or change the character down to contender number five, I have to do it myself. And then the number two will step up. Intimidating men to say the least. That is why they are the most decorated tag team here in UPW and Wednesday Night Showdown. There's the bell. It's going to be Nero and Big Bad Lenny starting it off. Big Bad Lenny starting it off with a snap suplex to Nero. Kick to the back. Nero sweeping the leg of Big uh, Lenny. Went for a camel clutch. Too close to the ropes. Had to break the submission. I don't care who you are, I don't care how big you are. Don't piss these two guys off. 
shoulder block into Big Bad Lenny by Nero. And Nero and especially Praetorian are not small men. I mean, I think Praetorian, out of all these men, weighs the most and stands the tallest. I mean, he does. Uh, Praetorian is 7'3", 425. The next closest person to him are Big Bad Lenny and Mosca, 7'2". And the next closest person to him in weight is Lenny at 355 and Mosca at 353. I mean, Praetorian's a monster. Nero tossing to the corner of the four horsemen. And we got our first tag. And drops Nero down hard. Nero back up to his feet. Mosca tossing him against the ropes. And a huge clothesline. And Mosca looking for a claw. Slam on Nero. Kick to the midsection. Double axe and on a clothesline. And looking for another claw. Slam. And Mosca. Living up to his name of the Barbarian. As he punishes Nero. Repeatedly. Nero trying to fight back to get back in this match. Oh, big jawbreaker. Oh, he just flipped off the wrong guy. Another jawbreaker. And Nero on the comeback clothesline. And a second. Oh, didn't even drop him with that side, that side drop kick. Oh, eight second ride. Goes for the pin, Nero. Barely at one count on the cover. Big Bad Lenny tosses the corner. And Nero. Grand amplitude goes for the pin, a bridge. And broken up by Big Bad Lenny and Lenny. Lenny was taking care of Nero. Mosca was getting pinned again. Lenny stopped. And look at Mosca. Going back after Praetorian. And Nero needs to get the hell out of the ring. And I'm sorry, it's not the Grand Amplitude, it's the Fall of Rome. I apologize. Lenny, submission specialist. He may have it locked in, but he may be too close to the ropes. How is he not too close to the ropes? Well, regardless, Praetorian did not submit. Back into the corner. Mosca catches the leg of Praetorian. Praetorian catches the leg of Mosca. Swings him around. Double axe handle dropping him down to the floor. Oh! And a Brody Lee style discus clothesline. We saw it on Monday. And now we're seeing it here on Wednesday, showing tribute. Anytime somebody does that, they're showing tribute to Brody Lee. Yes, we know he's not the first person who ever did it, not the last, but it's good to see. Now Mosca on the comeback on Praetorian. Mosca triple flows lines. Mosca pop up, gut wrench suplex. And again, Mosca, this time punishing Praetorian with those left hands. Praetorian tossed into the corner. Doesn't want to get hit with a Tower of Doom. And Mosca said, uh-uh, you ain't hitting me with that shit anymore. Running power slammed by Praetorian. 
And the veteran rolls out, comes back inside the ring. Praetorian takes down Mosca. Praetorian with a series of punches to the head. And finishes that comeback off. And Mosca not done. Still got a lot of life in him. And another pop-up gut wrench suplex by Mosca. I can tell you the Four Horsemen and the Weapons of Mass Destruction had one hell of a match at UPW Honor. If you didn't get to see UPW Honor, make sure you check it out. Look at the strength of Praetorian. Military drop on Mosca. And Mosca is not a small man. Like I said, weighing at 352. I mean, 353. But just a massive human. Uh, oh, gets the hot tag to Nero. And now it's Nero and Mosca back inside the ring. Nero with a clothesline. And a second one to Mosca. Goes for a third. Mosca catches him. German overhead release suplex. Mosca with the pin on Nero. Referee's in position. And a kick up by Nero at two on the near fall. Nero was going for a belly to belly suplex. Stopped by Mosca. Now Mosca, gut wrench suplex again. And a massive clothesline. And let, oh, Mosca looking for the submission. This time he is too close to the ropes. It's too close to the ropes this time. Oh, he looked tired. He was bent down, tired. He was able to turn around and now goes and tag this, his partner, Big Bad Lenny. And uh, Lenny's calling for it. He said it's over. Nero on the, on the mat. Nero with a nice sweep of the leg of Big Bad Lenny. Damn, it's hard to keep these guys down. Oh, and Nero going for the people's elbow. What the hell is this shit? Get the fuck out of here. You ain't the rock, mother... Nero into the corner. And look at the strength of Nero. Throws the 400 pounder in a crossbody against Big Bad Lenny. So Nero got that strength. And now what's, what's Praetorian going for? Apparently not a goddamn thing. <laughs> Lenny said, uh-uh, fuck that shit. Hey, this is Wednesday Night Showdown. Uh, it's a little different than all the other shows. This one's a little bit more violent. Oh! Corner backstabber by Praetorian. So... It gets a little bit more swearing in it than Monday primetime and Friday face off. So, backdrop by Big Bad Lenny on Praetorian. Now, Lenny tossing Praetorian into the corner. Are we going to see it? No, Praetorian pushing. No, not pushing, throwing Big Bad Lenny away. And an arm breaker. And now looking for an arm, he's in an arm bar, looking for a submission. Lenny does not submit. Of course, Big Bad Lenny and Mosca, originally called the Black Russians, they are the Black Russians, made by Blackwell. But once I got the uh, the Black Russians, uh, I asked Blackwell, would you be okay with them being four horsemen? And he said yes. So. And uh, they were well-deserved to be four horsemen. They really were. Oh, my God. 
Praetorian with that power bomb into the apron. And tossed away by Big Bad Lenny. Mosca was outside. What hair is he pulling on? Oh my god, that was loud. Both men fighting on the outside. Again, 20 second count out. Lenny. Oh! These men are destroying each other. Look at Big Bad Lenny on the top turnbuckle. Oh my god! A 6.30 cent time by that big man. On the big man. That is ridiculous. A ridiculous amount of athleticism by a man that size. Of course, we've seen men who could move like that. Like I talked about earlier, uh, the aforementioned John Hubert Brody Lee. He was one of those men, big men, who can show that he could fly around. Proves that it doesn't matter how big you are. There's a pin. And the four horsemen take the win. The punishment given out by the four horsemen on the gladiators was ridiculous. Even after the fall of Rome. I really thought Praetorian had him. I really did. Like Praetorian was doing so much damage. Praetorian showing his strength with that military slam, just a military drop. <clears throat> but it was that man right there with that 630 centon from the top turnbuckle. 300 and let's see, 355 pounds on a 630 centon falling on you. I don't care how big you are, you ain't getting up. And that's why they are the Wednesday night showdown tag team champions. All right, guys, let's keep this moving. I have been waiting for this match all night. Let's have some fun. This bout is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making his way down to the ring, standing at 6'1, weighing in at 300 pounds. From Portland, Oregon, Damien Big Money Daniels. Bit of advice if you guys are streamers or you record videos to put up on YouTube, make sure you get up and stretch. Do something. I was on my ass all day yesterday putting something together and I'm talking maybe six, seven hours. I didn't really get up and my body hurts. My ass hurts. My whole body hurts, man. So do what you got to do, but take a break. Take it from me. Take a break. And as you get you and if you're young you could probably do that but as you get older that shit starts to hurt I ain't saying I'm old but damn I'm older than young kids and his opponent hailing for Hartford Connecticut representing the horseman 
Standing at 5'11", 245 pounds. Blackwell! <clears throat> now we did see Blackwell in the UPW Honor pre-show win the AEW TNT Championship. But because they have retired that particular AEW TNT Championship uh, design, I thought it would be right if I got rid of that design as well. That championship and when there's a new design up, I will download it. And Blackwell is still the AEW TNT Champion. Or he may become a different champion here in um, a new championship belt might be created for UPW. But I wanted to be as honorable as possible as AEW did for Brody Lee. So, But I've been looking forward to this match all night. Blackwell pushing Damian Daniels into the corner. Oh, no clean break by the horseman as he punches Daniels in the face. Daniels with a fisherman suplex on Blackwell. Blackwell... He's not a heel. He's not a face. He just doesn't give a shit. Friends are not heel. He don't care. He'll do what he got to do to win a match. The man is ruthless. We'll see if he can take the match here tonight. But Damian Daniels is no pushover. Damian Daniels, former Intercontinental Champion. He will get a rematch as he lost the belt to Lance Archer. That one I know. And we'll see Lance Archer in action later tonight. Blackwell missing with the clothesline. Damien Daniels tossing Blackwell hard into the corner. And a cutter out of nowhere by Big Money. Funny thing is, is on Monday, there are multiple horsemen. Oh, Daniels with the pin. On Wednesday Night Showdown, there are only four, four horsemen. Like, there are only four members of the horsemen. Well, there are like seven on Monday primetime. That's why they, they're called just the horsemen, not the four horsemen. Um... And then on on, on Friday face-off, we have the women's, the four horsewomen, and they are, they're only four. Big clothesline by Blackwell. Oh, broke up the pin at one. Blackwell tosses Damien Daniels out to the outside and disrespectful. Again, 20 second count on the outside. Both men option to get back inside at three. Now Damian Daniels, series of kicks to the side and a punch. Are we gonna see some sliced bread? <coughs> Dice bread, sorry. There it is on Blackwell. Goes for the pin. And Big Money Daniels takes out Blackwell in quick fashion. That was unexpected. Unexpected to say the least. I didn't think that was going to happen. I'm really surprised at that one. I had no idea that was going to happen. 
That was a really, really quick match, considering who was in the match. And Big Money Daniels missing with that springboard. Uh, that wasn't a 6.30, a 4.30. But I did not expect that one bit. I did not expect, not that I don't have faith in Damian Daniels, but damn, that was quick. Extremely quick. I did not expect that to happen at all, one bit. Damien Daniels gets a dice bread and that's it. It was over. Congratulations to Big Money Daniels on your win. It's time for some more women's action coming up next. Speaking of four horsewomen, this contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Make it away down to the ring. From Milan, Italy, she is the diamond. Christina Ricardo. <clears throat> Christina Ricardo is a four horsewoman. However, she is now on Wednesday Night Showdown, formerly on Friday Face Off. So she is representing the four horsewomen, um, but not necessarily a part of them. Same thing like Cameron Santos, who is a representative of the four horsemen but not a full horseman herself. And her opponent from Cheyenne, Wyoming, Emma Elliott. Emma Elliott finally, finally did have her chance last season at holding gold, taking out Cameron Santos to become champion, but is now without the championship taken out by Christina Ricardo I believe but she did finally get her first championship referee calls for the bell and right away Christina Ricardo going for a clothesline misses Emma Elliott oh no oh, still misses whatever she was going Emma Elliott both women countering each other's moves Emma Elliott arguably the strongest of all the women in UPW she may not look it but she is ridiculously strong toss an Emma Elliott against the ropes drop down and a knee to the face or was that a kick to the face it went so fast I couldn't tell working on the arm I know I usually say good camera work during different parts, but the camera work so far has been pretty good for all the matches. Now looking for a submission is Christina Ricardo on Emma Elliott. Not going to get it that way. Emma Elliott rarely, rarely. Oh. Fisherman suplex. Is that a fisherman suplex? Or is that just a leg lock suplex? Eh, if you know the answer, just uh, correct me inside the comments. But um, Emma Elliott rarely ever submits. I don't think I've seen her submit. Christina Ricardo with a clothesline, finally connecting at Emma Elliott. Now looking for another submission hold. See, this bothers me because every time somebody gets put in that move, it always, they're tapping. But, oh, misses with the clothesline. Emma Elliott, gut wrench suplex. Look at Emma Elliott. 
with a submission of her own. Christina Ricardo able to escape. <clears throat> I believe the stretch muffler. Some of the names they have for some of these moves are ridiculous. And then of course, for CAWs we put our own names on on moves. And some of them are ridiculous and some of them are less than that. Nice takedown by Christina Ricardo on Emma Elliott. Pulls away from the ropes. There's a cover. And Elliot with the kick out at two in the near fall. Christina Ricardo going to the top turn, but could be looking for that Milan shooting star. Connects right into a pin on Emma Elliott. And Elliot able to kick out again at two in the near fall. Emma Elliott trying to get back in control of this match. Christina Ricardo, oh, with the disrespect, slapping her across the face. And Christina Ricardo back to the top turnbuckle. Is she going for another? No, she's egging Emma Elliott to stand up. And hits her with a hurricane run in front of the top turnbuckle. Now a series of elbows to the top of the head. Kicked away by Elliot. Kick to the midsection. The bitter end. And Christina Ricardo kicks out at two on the near fall of her own. Was that the bitter end or just the X-Plex? That was the X-Plex. I forgot. They look very similar, so... Nice size suplex by the former champion. Former six-time champion in Friday Faceoff. One-time champion here. Tilt-A-World DDT on M. Elliott. Goes for the pin. Damn, that camera worked. And that tilt to world DDT was enough to take out Emma Elliott, the former champion. We'll get a rematch against Cameron Santos, but making a statement here tonight on why she deserves that rematch. She wasn't playing around. But it's a long season, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see Emma Elliott with some gold around her waist. At some point, beautiful Maloon. Uh, Maloon. <laughs> Milan shooting star. And I called it the Milan shooting star because she's from Milan, Italy. But it is a shooting star for us. So I got it right. But it was this move that put away Emma Elliott that Tilt the World DDT. Decided to go for that instead of another Milan shooting star. And she takes the win and sending a message to the champion. She's coming back one more time for that championship. And we'll see. It could be at the end of the month in the pay-per-view. Or it could be during the week. Because we'll be doing championship matches during the weeks in the shows. That's why I'm having one pay-per-view a month. So we'll go and see what happens from there. All right, it's time to see the new Intercontinental Champion, Lance Archer, versus the leader of the Four Horsemen here on Wednesday Night Showdown, Dennis Diaz. I could have a green Four Horsemen symbol there, but... 2K did an update and now I can't make videos. So, thanks 2K. You didn't have to break 2K19. You already did that with 2K20. And then you tried to fix 2K20 and you just broke it more. <clears throat> not that it was feasible or uh, not feasible, but able to be saved anyway. 
This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Making his way down to the ring, standing at 6'3", weighing in at 240 pounds from Buffalo, New York. Representing the four horsemen, Dennis Diaz. Former Intercontinental Champion. Former Malta Intercontinental Champion. Lost a belt to Damian Daniels. Who we just saw in action earlier tonight. And then this man captured this from Damian Daniels at UPW Honor. And his opponent, standing at 6'8", weighing in at 276 pounds from Dallas, Texas. He is the Wednesday Night Showdown Intercontinental Champion, Lance. Archer and Lance Archer last week um, on AEW uh, Dynamite on the tribute show to Brody Lee he came out dressed in uh, John Huber's old Luke Harper getup with the jeans and the, uh, the dirty white tank top white beater shirt and I thought it was it was a great tribute. I thought it was, a, it was, it was, it was great. It, I thought it was amazing that he did that. <clears throat> he wasn't trying to take a, a, a hit on WWE. He wasn't trying to, you know, knock WWE or anything like that. He was just paying tribute to a good friend and he did. He did a great job. Got a lot more respect for this man than I did before. And I had a lot of respect for him before. You got the leader of the four horsemen versus the intercontinental champion. And there's a bell. And Diaz right away with a ramming headbutt to the champion. We know he is famous for using his head as a battering ram. <clears throat> Catches the kick of Lance Archer and spins him around in a clothesline. Lance Archer with a reversal shoulder block into the the horseman and a shoulder block of his own on the counter. Slap to the face, kick to the midsection, double axe handle to the back and a clothesline. Elbow by and a big boot by the Intercontinental Champion. Oh, that'll, that'll call you to the dentist. Britt Baker can help you with that one on that jawbreaker. And another clothesline by Dennis Diaz. And Dennis Diaz looking for that claw. Slam! Dragon screw. Dennis Diaz showing his strength with that claw slam, lifting the almost 300 pounder. Now, the, the fact that he uses his head as a battering ram. I wouldn't do that. I don't think it would really affect him that much if you hit his head 10 times against the, the turnbuckle. Oh, he held him too long. And Diaz. Oh my God. Throws him with that power bomb. His head catching the ropes and the bottom turnbuckle. Diaz off the middle turnbuckle. And swings around for a spinning DDT. Beautiful move. I was not expecting that at all. Came out of nowhere. Damn, he's fast for an old man. Um, and a sit-out power bomb does does not go for the pin. 
There's the pin. And a kick out by Lance Archer. And Diaz could be looking for that high cross. He's put many opponents away with this move. Oh my God. And again, showing the strength. On the almost 300 pounder, goes for the cover. And the Intercontinental Champion kicks out at two in the near fall. Shoulder block reversal by Lance Archer. Tossed into the corner, double X handle. Before I can even say anything, they change. Back into the corner. Lance Archer turning the former champion around. Now places him up on the top turnbuckle. Oh my god! The iconoclasm. I believe that that was what it was. Unless he stands up and decides to do something else. No, that was the iconoclasm. Or, yeah, iconoclasm. That's what he calls it. Oh, catches. Oh! Drops Diaz. Oh, was looking for a claw slam. Uh, with a, looking for a choke slam. Diaz using that head as a battering ram again. Oh, shit. And a choke slam. And Diaz again. Not settling. What is he going for here? Oh my god, that throwing power bomb on Lance Archer again, showing that strength by the former champion and leader of the four horsemen here on a Wednesday night showdown. And now Diaz on the comeback. Clothesline. A second clothesline. And a side drop kick. I didn't know that it was called a side drop kick until. Who's this guy? Uh, Excalibur on Wednesday Night Showdown said that. Now, I don't know if I want to put too much emphasis on what Excalibur says, but if he says it was a side drop kick, well, that's what I'll go with since they don't really say what it is. Big boot to the face by Lance Archer on Dennis Diaz. Diaz still fighting back in a clothesline of his own. Goes for the pin. And a kick out by the champion at two. <clears throat> Toss into the corner. Kick to the midsection. Headbutt. A punch to the to the head. Diaz walking back. Going for a drive-by and he busts the champion wide open i said buses bust the champion wide open now on the top turnbuckle turns around oh my god misses i'm not even gonna try and figure out what the hell that's called because i don't know lance archer looking for a submission i mean look at look at the lance archer Gets a drive-by hit to the head. X-Plex by Diaz goes for the pin. And another kick out by the champion and near fall at two. He gets he gets hit with a, a drive-by. Diaz has been using his head as a battering ram and whatever else. And not one bit of blood. Big, big, big power bomb on Lance Archer. Lance Archer still fighting back, refusing to give up. Oh my god. This man is 276 pounds. He's on the top turn, but what is he doing? Oh, was going for an elbow. Diaz moves out of the way. Hits nothing but the mat. Full Nelson slam. There's the pin. 
and a kick up by Diaz at two on the near fall. Tossing Diaz in a corner, looking for that iconoclasm again. Diaz. Another X-Plex. Diaz sit out power bomb Lance Archer fighting back Diaz reverses puts him in the corner kick to the midsection oh my god a cross-legged springboard Moonsault into a pin. Catches the leg. And Diaz is giving the champion one hell of a fight. Puts him in the corner again. Drops him. Lance Archer able to push him away. And Archer with a big slam face first to Diaz. And looking for another choke slam. And drives him down into the mat. Goes for the pin. And the Intercontinental Champion takes the win on Dennis Diaz after all that punishment and the blood. The Intercontinental Champion, Lance Archer, still able to take the win. After all that punishment, I, I seriously thought Lance Archer was done. you're watching Wednesday Night Showdown, remember, if you like the content, remember, hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. It doesn't cost you a dime. It's absolutely free. Join the channel. Join the UPW revolution that we have. Eight seasons strong here on 2K19. There were a lot of, there were a few seasons on 2K18. Uh, but to get eight seasons out of 2k19 is ridiculous but we're still going strong three going on four years of upw and still got people watching join the channel there'll be some other videos going up soon other than just wrestling so make sure if you subscribe you hit that notifications button also and help me grow the channel Let's grow this channel more. Oh, damn. I dropped the speaker. Uh, more than just. Um, more than just. The few subscribers I have. Let's grow the channel. Let's make it a bigger, bigger thing. And become part of the Diaz Empire. Become part of UPW. Become part of this channel. All right, guys. It's time for the main event of the evening. And it's a big one. Yes, I was thinking about getting my balls laminated. Oh, we're back. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making his way down to the ring from Las Vegas, Nevada, standing at 6'11, weighing in at 455 pounds. He is the man, the myth, the legend, Wesley Wolf. I don't, Wesley's in like every E Fed. I don't know if uh, he is called the same uh, in any E Fed that I call him. But I know I came up with with it here in UPW, the man, the myth, the legend, because every time I see him in every E-Fed, the man is a beast. He does win. He wins here. So he is the man. I say the myth. He is no myth, but he is a legend. Here comes his potential. 
potential. Shit. Oh, shit. And his opponent. Hailing from Shangri-La, standing at 6'11", 390 pounds. He is the UPW Wednesday Night Showdown Super Heavyweight Champion, Swan Aura. Swan Aura capturing that championship belt from the Fallen Angel Jericho White at UPW Honor. Swan Aura took it away from him and... He now is the man on Wednesday Night Showdown. And this is a man that Wesley could potentially be facing. Um, as Wesley is the number one contender. But here's, here's the thing. Wesley could be facing him for the championship. But at the same time, if Jericho White wins back that championship, Wesley is still going to get a shot at that championship before... The, the former champion win uh, gets his shot at a rematch. So, uh, regardless, uh, he's still going to get a, a title shot right away. <clears throat> Both humongous men go into the ring. Wesley showing his athleticism. I don't know what the hell just happened there, so don't ask. Swan R with the reversal forearm into the back of Wesley Wolf. And what the hell is that? Swan Aura. That's 455 pounds, man. He's almost at max weight here in UPW. And he just put him in. I don't even know what the hell that was. That was ridiculous. Goes for the pin on Wesley. Not even a one count. This is the only show where you have super heavyweights. I mean, you have super heavyweights in other shows. This is the only super heavyweight championship from any of the shows. There is no other super he uh, heavyweight championship anywhere. And Wesley just banging Swan Orr's head into the mat. Goes for a lackluster pin. Not even close to a one count. And the veteran again. Another veteran rolls to the outside. Wesley Wolf, backbreaker on the new super heavyweight champion. And Wesley showing homage to the Undertaker, showing us some old school walking those ropes. And my favorite move still has a change in eight season, the vicious neck crank. Horseshit. Shoulder block by the super heavyweight champion. Wesley catching a leg. Sweeps the leg of Swan Aura. Single leg Boston Crab looking for a submission by the champion. No, Swan Aura kicking Wesley away. Big neck breaker by that super heavyweight champion. Wesley raking the eyes of Swan Aura. Swan Aura fighting back. Kick to the midsection by Wesley. Oh, catches the leg of Wesley. I. What the hell was that? Double arm power driver by a Swan Aura and setting up for the Swan Dive. This is how he took out the biggest man at UPW and Jericho White. Swan Dive. Oh, too close to the ropes? Was he too close to the ropes? Because that was a quick kick out. Clothesline to the outside. Thank God it's only the second time tonight. Oh, and look at Wesley in the top turn bubble. Swan Aura on the outside. Wesley missing with the crossbody on the outside. 
Swan R missing with a super kick. Wesley pushing away. Oh, clothesline into the apron. Oh, and tosses Wesley against the rope. I mean, against the uh, steel steps. Draped across the ropes. Now what's Wesley thinking here? Wesley working on that leg. Wesley, a submission specialist, but not on the leg. Oh, there it is, the claw hold. Can Swan Orr survive? Or is he done? Wesley Wolf has just taken out the super heavyweight champion. And if I was Swan Orr, knowing that this guy was waiting in the wings. I mean, Swan Orr took it from Jericho White. Jericho White is a mission specialist of his own. But Jericho didn't even get the chance to use his finishing move. And Swanora just stayed on top of him. Didn't give him a chance to use his finishing move at the pay-per-view of, Wednesday, of uh, UPW Honor. And the fact that the fallen angel Jericho wasn't able to go for the death grip um, kept him from winning the championship. But... He didn't do the same thing with Wesley tonight. And Wesley takes the win. When and if he faces Wesley for that championship, will he be able to make sure that Wesley does not get the chance to use the claw hold? Made famous by the Von Erics. You want to look back in history. So congratulations to Wesley Wolf, the number one contender for the Super Heavyweight Championship. He will either be facing Swan Aura or he will be facing Jericho White after his uh, rematch. And Wesley Wolf closes out the first episode of Wednesday Night Showdown. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave your likes and comments in the section below. Thank you for being here. We will be here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 o'clock. So do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're here. I am live in the chat every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during the shows. Uh, whether they're an hour and a half or four hours during the pay-per-view. And trust me, sitting in a chair, my ass hurts while I'm doing that. But... This is what I do. I give that, you know, I give up that pain for you guys. So make sure you're here. I will see you guys on Friday. Friday Face Off is all brand new. And Friday Face Off is, I'm not going to spoil it for you. But Friday Face Off is going to be a badass show. I'll check you guys out later. Thanks for being here. Stay safe. This is the Maximus Kane. And I'm out.